We created habitat for a critically endangered organism out of a parking lot. Three years ago, this was a parking lot. It was just a bunch of rock and fill. And now look at what this landscape has become. The fact that we can create habitat for rare organisms that are an indicator of ecosystem health. And that just brings me alive. That's everything I want in the world. We undid the damage that had been done on this landscape and created a place where the water really can be received, held, and you can just see the life that is springing out of this. Where water accumulates, life generates. This project is a perfect example of how when you take one step forward, nature takes the next 10. Hey guys, we just ran into a client the other day and got the chance and invitation to visit this project that we did previously, which is just looking beautiful. We're just in the middle of development here in Big Sky, Montana. The previous owner actually got permission from the Army Corps to fill in a wetland that was there. They were actually gonna have a parking lot and a cul-de-sac right where the wetland once was. They had planned a development in this area and they brought us in to see how can we do a development better? How can we do right by the land here? So we came up with a bunch of different ideas and concepts and when we came here, we did a test slice. We saw that it was all pit run and we saw that there was a bit of water in the bottom too. That told us a general idea of what might be possible here. It was very clear that this was gonna be a good place for a water body. We took that first big step, digging all of that rocky material that you see in the pile behind me over there, digging all of that stuff out of here, leaving a nice compacted clay earthen bottom this pond has no liner. You know, you'd look at the sagebrush all around and say, there's no way you can build a water body here without a liner. But when you know how to read the landscape, you know exactly where to go. And you can do those test slices and see, oh, actually there's a lot possible here. So this right here, believe it or not, this is what that area was looking like when we first arrived here. You can see, gosh, there's just no life happening here. On a hot day, this ground is gonna get so much hotter, which is actually gonna increase its ability to hold temperature. We're in a very dry area here. I mean, you can see down where I am, this is lush and green, nitrogen rich growth. But if we look anywhere else on this landscape, it's just sagebrush. We put all sorts of rocks and boulders all around the edge here to create extra habitat. These were the biggest stones from the fill material that was placed in to destroy this area. Uh, and so we used them as habitat features on the edges, made some extra structure and places for small critters to hide out. We undid the damage that had been done on this landscape and created a place where the water really can be received, held, benefit the landscape and infiltrate into this landscape. So not only is it much more resistant to heating up, but it's a landscape that's actively cooling. And so if we did this everywhere, we could really start to break up the heat islands and the global warming that we see causing issues for humans and wildlife all around the world. Where water accumulates, life generates. And you can just see the life that is springing out of this it's just amazing how quickly this is established. Dragonflies coming and laying their eggs, little bugs in the water. I mean, how much life this is supporting is pretty mind boggling really. And so people always ask, what about mosquitoes in a place like this or a situation like this? Well, the mosquito larva is just this tiny little larva at the surface that's food for basically everything. And so these guys, dragonfly larvae, all sorts of other critters in the water are gonna be eating those. A lot of our students and clients report less mosquitoes around the water body because there's so many predators. Whoa, what? There's no way. That is a freaking axolotl. It's a salamander essentially that is always in the water. It keeps some of its juvenile traits. You can see these beautiful gills on it. This one has unfortunately passed, but this is a sign that surely there's others 
living in here. I've traveled to some very remote places to try and see these, and I've never actually seen them. And lo and behold, in this project that we did three years ago, that we turned from a barren parking lot into the water body that you see here today, has axolotls growing in it. Just talked to our client here and confirmed they did indeed not introduce axolotl here. You know, all of this life came in on its own. Here we've got some nice big elk tracks. The elk are benefiting from this as well. The deer, the insects, the birds. You can see just the shocking transformation that's happened in just a couple of years as a result of just two weeks of work. This is a story that just repeats place after place, year after year. For the sake of development, humans drain the landscape. That parking lot was not providing any benefit to anybody because there weren't even people living here. And now look at what this landscape has become. When we partner and align ourselves with nature, we can create beautiful, healthy, sustainable, regenerative, and productive landscapes. I started this saying, you know, you take one step forward and nature takes the next 10. I think with what we've seen here, you can safely say you take one step forward and nature takes the next 100. To think that we went from a barren, lifeless, stony, dry parking lot to habitat for a critically endangered species of salamander. Wow, nature, you are amazing. And you know, it just goes to show how quickly things could recover if we start moving in the right direction. How quickly we could recover a lot of what we've lost how quickly nature recovers herself when you just create the space and take that first step forward.